Welcome everyone. We'll call the meeting to order and we'll do a, a prayer brought by Pastor Ayers and followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and the roll call. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for the men and women that uh, commit their time and their efforts uh, uh, to lead our village. And Lord, I pray that for them, that to give them uh, wisdom and guidance. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Individual with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor Ayers. Very much. Roll call, please. Baker? Yes. Bassett? Yes, sir. Jones? Here. Beverly? Here. Bridgeway? Yes. Barth? Here. You have the minutes from the October 15th regular council meeting. Are there any additions or corrections? Yes. Uh, on the very first page there, the, the, the whole topic of the sign and the GoFundMe page and the donations came to 52.50. This says that the remaining 1,750 match will be put in the 2000 dollars or 2019 budget. We all voted yes for that. Mm -hmm. I've not, I did not, never voted yes to do that. Somebody asked me, can we put that in next year's budget? Yeah, I and that, that was question. said yes. It could be put in next year's budget, but we never voted on that. That's true. And I would never agree to that. I thought we did because I repeated it twice. We said, well, let's look forward to see what the sign looks like and go from there. And yeah, we, we never so. voted on it one one time. Did we ever vote on that? I don't well, we did minutes. We did vote that we would give up to thirty five hundred dollars on the sign. But this is says we're gonna do the other seventeen fifty, we're gonna match that oh, next year. No, that was not said. Right. I don't think it was said. Ron said so if we wanna add that we could put it in we'd next year's budget. We'd wait and yeah, see. Yeah, we'd wait and see how this is we all voted yes and approved it. Yeah, I didn't get that part. So do you wanna delete that statement? Well it's not true. I never voted yes for that and I won't. I agree with you. <coughs> Okay, anything else? Additions or corrections? Thank you, Eric. We'll have a motion to approve if you want to. You can wait till next time. I'll rewrite that and put it in. Approve with removal of that section. I need a motion to approve. Wish to approve the amended minutes. I'll second it. Roll call, please. I want to see the amended minutes first. Pardon me? Yeah, we would want to see them first. You can bring them at the next meeting. Well, thank you. Well, can we just delete that part? Normally, what I always did was we approved the minutes with the correction. Yeah. But if you don't want to approve them tonight, Cheryl, that way that's fine with me. So I guess. We're just going to let our motion lie. And I'll have them next time with the correction. Okay. <clears throat> so going on to the bills list, <coughs> you, um, while you're talking, um, do you have any questions about the bills? There's two. There was one on the table tonight, too, an additional one with your papers. I have a few questions. DJ Prescott. Uh, still getting the big meters. Okay. They're all in except one so far. So that should be hopefully the end of these. Yeah, it should still be around 1,200 for the last one. Okay. Uh, Finley Fire, we dropped about 8,600 bucks. The, the first one is kind of donation funds and equipment for the tower. The second one is the new helmets that we had to order this year because we're a 10 year life cycle. Van Wert Fire Equipment, 11,000. 90,000 of that was grant money from Bureau of Workers Comp. That was for um, cancer barrier hood and a new gear washer and gloves. So we only paid a little over 2000 out of that. What kind of washer? New 
uh, gear washer. Oh, how much does that cost? I think that was about six, seven thousand of it. Do you currently have a gear washer? We do. I thought you did. But it's like 20 years old. Mm. The uh, Community Action Commission for 10 grand. Is that a house oh. demo? <coughs> no, it's part of the GIS and asset management thing to do with our staff. <coughs> Are there any more questions? Works and Waterworks, 2588. Those were some meters, too. Software solutions for $6,700. That's our annual fee. If uh, if nobody has anything else, I move we approve these bills and ask that the <coughs> financial officer starts doing this printout like she used to and said it like this. <laughs> Does anybody else agree with me? On yes, that? agreed. I I talked to her about it. Oh. Uh, it's like 30 pages long. I mean, I, I had one it's right here. on my desk this afternoon to right read here. through this before the it. meeting, and I brought it with me to pass around. So if someone I looked at it quickly, at it but it's not a chance to really but, look at it. I mean, it. I hate to give everybody 30 pages of pro approved bills, but. Well, even if we went back to the other style that we used to always have. I mean, that was yeah, another type of software on your computer. I don't know if you. I'll ask him if it's yeah. compatible. Okay, anyhow, I move with okay. Second. Roll call, please. Ridgeway? Yes. Jones? Yes. Baker? Yep. Barth? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Okay. Going on, you have minutes in your packet from the Nuisance Board meeting of October 10th and the 25th. Um, we were just looking at a couple of properties to get them cleaned up. <coughs> Uh, does anyone have any questions about either of those? Okay. I'd like to comment on Crook Miller looks a lot better. So that was yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that was from the nuisance board, right? That was yeah. And they're not done yet. Have we seen yeah. Nolte's? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Looks so nice. Yeah. Nolte's and Crook Miller just look absolutely wonderful. Yes. Very happy with those two. There's Maybe we should call. Instead of calling it Nolte's anymore, having that name related, we should call it the, the West End uh, <laughs> Park property or something. Mm -hmm. Come up with some beautiful name, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's other places I noticed around town getting cleaned up too, so it's nice. Every little bit helps. <clears throat> so then we go on to the park board minutes um, from October 17th. And. Um, Park board member Mr. Hart's here in case anybody. says that um, you'd like to have, you're um, proposing to have a day in the park on June 29th of next year and you're looking at doing a 5k run walk you'd like to have various sports tournaments such as volleyball three and three basketball wiffle ball or softball I know there's even more things you could have with get disc golf or, and you know other things at the park and um, they'd like to have a band or a DJ for the evening along with uh, some food vendors bingo in the pavilion a local vendors to sell their products, a couple bounce houses, horses and ponies, and such things as that. That sounds like a wonderful event. So you need help, volunteers, anything. 
people to organize the events? <laughs> I think they're checking with other organizations too, uh, maybe the Eagle, the Chamber. Uh, we want to make this a low cost fun day in the park for everybody, um, different activities. So uh, I think it's a good idea for Hicksville to have, um, and it's just starting to become, you know, the planning stages of it. But uh, I know the Chamber has been to a meeting and, and they're receptive for it. So things are starting to come around. And I see that the park got 17 reclining chairs from the Auburn pool for $10 each. And I would like to thank Mike Barth for that because I think, Mike, you had something to do with that you found out that those recliners were being sold and tipped the park off. So I did? Yeah, I, I did. I think no. you did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I wanted to get their slide. Oh, the they slide would have been there. huge <laughs> slide over at Auburn at the park that I grew up in, and it's closed now. And I think they went over to check on that to see what kind of shape it was in. And it's not in very good shape. Um, but then they had showed them the chairs there and kind of picked up on that idea. So, <laughs> Well, that was great. Because yeah. I went to the park this summer swimming, and they had like three recliners, and they were, that's the first thing everybody grabbed when <laughs> they got there was claimed one of those. So do you know if the cracks on the tennis courts are repaired yet? No, I do not. Oh, I just wondered. Okay. Thank uh, you. Mayor, with all this vandalism that's going on down there, and, and, and uh, this is more than once they've said that uh, because of the cameras they can't really identify, it's just kind of a ghosty picture. Why don't we get some better cameras? They're really good cameras. I think they're, I'm not sure the vandalism is being done at, but all the cameras are right on the, the park building itself. They don't have them actually in the dugouts or inside the fenced in areas. <coughs> is that where the vandalism is happening at? Uh, some of it's on that, on that, well, ground apparatus. Adventure uh, Alley? No, yeah. McDonald's. McDonald's. Oh, McDonald's. McDonald's, game. Oh, McDonald's. Yeah. They actually have it taped off right now. No. Oh. Really? Yeah. So the rocket. That's what my grandkids call it, the rocket. Uh, but I, know, again, I know they have three megapixel cameras down there, so I know they're... But they checked with the people, and they said, you need to upgrade, and that yeah. kind of ticked us off because all the money we spent, and now we can't get a good picture of them, uh, wasn't real. Can we use a body camera on there? <laughs> <laughs> but there, put a couple in, trail cams up or something. That'd be the best thing right there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you just got to stop. I mean, you look back it, just the years that I've sat at this table of uh, how much damage has been done down there. It's, it's wow. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Thank you, Ron. We will go on then to the council committee reports. Are there any committees that have reports? <coughs> uh, the police fire and uh, EMS, we met and did uh, some interviews last week for the police chief. Still waiting on some callbacks, uh, references, and we'll have a recommendation at the next council meeting and have minutes for everyone for the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you for the time spent on that. We have 30 some applicants, interviewed three applicants. Any other committee reports from council? Yeah, Mayor, the Hicks TV minutes are put on the desk tonight. Oh, okay. You have in, on the table tonight the Hicks TV minutes from the October 13th meeting. like they're planning to get some new equipment. They submitted their 2019 budget. There was an update from SMTA. Does anyone have any questions for Mike Garth or Bill back there? We're just trying to come up with new ideas to tape or bring different programs to the community through Mediacom and XTV. But if anybody has any ideas, please give us a call. Or Call the mayor and we can maybe take a look at it. We did a program um, last week. I did a program with Chris Palmer uh, from the Defiance Prosecutor's Office. Just a really informal discussion in here on guardianship um, here in the Hicksville area. Um, and so if there's any topics like that that anybody wants to just have a, a program on TV about what your organization is doing or anything that we could show on Hicks TV 
Bill would be willing to videotape a program like that. And I think United Way would like to come and do one and some other organizations. Um, we did it with the uh, Humane Society last year. So Bill will do that kind of stuff if you come up with an interesting topic. Okay, if there's no other committee reports, we'll go on to the administrator's report. Yeah, so I was going to say, people don't need to call until they have to use that. <laughs> At this point, um, we're planning to be out till December 7th, weather permitting. Things suddenly get started dropping, so we barely got the old Tuesday trash route done today. We hit every street once, and then there was people bringing out after we went by, but we'll get them later this week. So weather permitting, we'll try to hit like the north main out the Haver Drive area tomorrow and then start the south side. But we know they're out there, we'll get them as quick as we can. Any questions for Kent? Real quick though. So, um, I was at the recycling plant this week and they were taking the uh, asphalt grindings down there, pretty good sized pile. What do we do with those when, because I know Billy had mentioned people come in there and ask if, if, if that's for sale. Oh, yeah, everybody wants them. Yeah. We use them for berm work, some pothole work. But no, I don't want to get rid of them. No, they come in handy. I know we got a ton of them, but they come in handy. <coughs> I got a thousand ton over there to my place if anybody wants to buy some. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Going on then, we'll go to the solicitor's report. First thing I have is <clears throat> Ordinance 2018 14, uh, first reading by caption only, an ordinance to amend. The annual appropriations ordinance. Got questions you can ask Cheryl about that. Next is resolution 2018 24. It's a third reading by caption only as a resolution opposing state issue one. It's on the ballot tomorrow. It's on the ballot tomorrow. What's the third reading? <laughs> Try. That was the third reading. Yeah. Oh. Does anybody want to pass that? So move. Second. Roll call, please. Ridgeway? Yes. Jones? Yes. Oh. yes. <laughs> Baker? Yeah. <laughs> Bassett? Yes. Beverly? Okay. Barth? Sure. <laughs> and then last is uh, resolution 2018 27. First reading by Captain Only, a resolution for the village of Hicksville, Iowa, to enter into a farm lease with Roger D. Dyke Report for the farming of the vacant land in the Hicksville Industrial Park and the climate emergency. And that's the lease. Our lease is up at the end of this month. But we have the three year term lease. Thank I you. Move, I move we suspend the rules. And I'll second it. Oh, that was a first. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Baker? Yes. Jones? Yes. Bridgeway? Yes. Barth? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Bassett? Yes. The second and third readings of resolution 2018-27 by caption only a resolution for the village of Hicksville, Ohio to enter into a farm lease with Roger Zedek the fourth for the farming of the vacant land in the Hicksville Industrial Park and declared an emergency. I just got a question on that. Is that the same price we, I know it was bedded, bedded, it was bed. No. It's cheaper. It came down quite a bit. Simply okay. because we're running out of land out there. Okay, I was just curious. About half of it. We're down to about 22 mm -hmm. and a half acres. But I mean, that are farmable. Yeah. What what bid did we get? I guess I can look. Uh -huh. I'll second that. Roll call, please. Ridgeway? Yes. Barth? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Jones? Yes. Baker? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Thank you. Anything else for Troy? Does anybody have any questions? Or Troy, do you have follow-ups on anything we were waiting on? No, I mean, I've been working on some things uh, that Craig sent over on some policies and stuff, and I got them partway there, but quite frankly, I'm kind of waiting to see uh, who the new chief's going to be so we can get some input from them. There's a body cam policy that we're going to need to have once we get up for training and stuff on that. Um, at the last meeting, Craig had mentioned the ride-along policy and getting that in place 
and he sent me over some things and I started putting it together, but um, we should be able to have those wrapped up pretty soon. Well, we were, are down to the department. Um, Sergeant Doctor, do you have anything you'd like to report to the council? Yes. I can take it if you go I was going to ask you if we should take the microphone. Today. No, no. I, um, I went to the doctor on the 1st, and they gave me two more weeks with the boot, and then they're going to start weaning me off of it, is what they said. So I'm not going to need surgery. But um, Patrolman Stos has been here for about a year. Um, I'd like to see him moved up to Patrolman 1. Um, he's been a good officer for us, so I would really like to see that happen. Uh, everybody on the department has done and completed their firearms qualifications for the year. Um, they also completed all their uh, taser qualifications for the year. They're kind of a little different. Um, the department has three different models of taser and you have to be qualified on each model to use it. So we have everybody on all models, so it doesn't really matter now. Um, I don't know if some of you probably saw the video of Officer, Officer Bostic volunteered to take a shot. So. <laughs> Well, we're pretty happy with that. Um, we updated all the key holders for businesses in town for our new reporting system. Um, if there's anybody that we missed or anything, we'd like to know so we can make sure that they're in the new system. I think we got everybody though. And then if we could get um, on the village website, the fact that we have a, I thought it was on silent. Alice instructor on the department now. Um, Chris Taylor, we're able to get with the state, get with the Alice program, and we got Chris Taylor certified as an Alice instructor, able to get his renewed. He's been teaching for a little while on that. Um, it's really a great program. Churches, businesses, school, anything like that, it'd be great. Did he do St. Michael's recently, or did they No, he, we, he, he actually got certif recertified the day St. Mike's did theirs, so okay. it wasn't early enough, but he's able to do those now. Um, I'm looking forward to doing that kind of stuff, actually. And then, like, Eric, you probably know what's going on. I don't really want to talk about that mm -hmm. right now. But um, since the last council meeting, 23 junk vehicles were moved from the verbal warning. After they were given verbal warning, two people received citations for the junk vehicles. Um, and three people were recently given two-week notices. We started with 86 cars, and right now we're down about 40. Um, it's uh, we got a kind of a master list now it really kind of changes the way we're keeping track of them and you know um, part of the reason is get, part of the difficulty is getting hold of people and the other difficulty is we're finding people are just taking their car and moving it somewhere else so we're having to track them down you, you know keep keep an eye on that <laughs> way. Um, the other the other big question we keep getting is why we're not out at the school doing um, the traffic control out at the school every single day I've been asked that I don't know how many times, and um, I, I did something about it on Facebook today, but we've been kind of focusing on the, the bus stops and the bus routes. Um, to me, the bus routes and the bus stops are a heck of a lot more important than directing traffic out there to school. Besides, I think now that the year's going on a little bit, the, the traffic out at the school loop's not near as bad as what it was the beginning of the year. Um, and then the policies I gave to Troy, we actually have that training. It was scheduled from before, but that schedule, uh, the body camera stuff is for Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, but the body cameras are all mounted, hooked up, everything's ready to go. Um, the training is scheduled, and then once the policy, and of course whoever's the chief, what they want to do with it, but that's all ready. Uh, that's all I got. Good. Well, I would um, <clears throat> recommend uh, that uh, off patrolman stoats be be uh, upgraded to a patrolman one it looks like you got a good um, review and you believe he's coming along well I do. and uh, and you think he's ready yeah absolutely i give motion to the mayor's recommendation for officer styles to be upgraded i'll second that Roll call, please. Ridgeway? Yes. Jones? Yes. Baker? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Barth? Yes. 
Did anyone have any questions for <coughs> Sergeant Doctor? Thank you. Okay. Yep. Looks like things are going well. All right, come on up. Fire Chief Kramer. Got quite a bit to go over tonight. Uh, we applied for two different AFG grants. Um, one is we reapplied for the air pack. We got denied this year. So we reapplied again next year. And we applied with Defiance and City Defiance and some of the other departments in the county for an AFG grant towards radios. And also the State Fire Marshal grant opened today for radios. I'll be filling that out and getting that submitted. We're submitting that countywide to hopefully increase our chances of getting it. Uh, runs for the month of October, we had a total of 32. 27 of them were rescue and emergency medical service. We had one hazardous condition, no fire, one service call, two good intent calls, and a false alarm call. We got some things coming up. I'd like to thank everybody. Hope everybody had fun at the carnival this year. It was packed as usual. It was well attended. Uh, Christmas for kid ap kids applications are out. They're available here at the city hall or next door at the fire station. Uh, between 8 and midnight over there, 8 to 5 here. Okay. They're due in uh, December 7th, and we'll be handing toys out on December 17th. Uh, and if people, some people I know make monetary donations to you because they drop them off in our offices. Yes. And, and if people want to make a monetary donation, what is the best way to get the money to you? either here or next door at the fire station. Okay. Uh, there is cans around town for loose change and stuff. Uh, there will be a live drive coming up. I believe it is. And I'm not sure when it is. It's Do you know where that will be held? It will be down on uh, at the ex a tax place on uh, Albano? Uh, yeah. Okay. It is the 17th. This December 17th? December, no, November 17th. November 17th. Next okay. Saturday. Yeah, I guess that would make sense. Mm -hmm. On Month Street. <laughs> Should have the road down. Uh, this weekend, on Saturday the 10th, we have the feather party next door. Uh, bingo. It's $4 card, $10 for three cards. Doors open at 4 p.m. Food will start serving at 4 p.m. And bingo games start at 6 p.m. The prizes are turkey, turkeys, hams, cash, and door prizes. And then Sunday, starting at 5 p.m., we have the veterans dinner at the Catholic Church. And Mayor, was you going to mention yours in your report? The at the Veterans Park. The activities yeah. there, and yeah. yeah, I can do okay. that in my report. Yeah. Okay. Right. <clears throat> yep. And I think that's all I have. Thank you. That's Any a questions lot. for me? And I know that bingo party is a lot of fun. It's usually packed as well. Yeah. We appreciate all the support we get from. The Scott, your department and your auxiliary do a great job. I mean, the uh, Halloween party was very well received and packed, lots of fun. And turn around and do another party the next week or two weeks later. It's a really good job. I guess it'd be a busy time of year for us with yeah. everything going on, but we try. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. You are busy. Thank you. And then we will go on to nothing else. I, I have the park on the agenda, but. Nothing else for the park, I assume. <coughs> All right, we will go on to the fiscal officer's report. I have the October reports for you, the fund status, um, the revolving loan, our income tax report, utilities, mayor's court. I also have a list of liquor permits and uh, the Mediacom franchise fees. The income tax collections, I'm happy to see them up 8% for the year.
Are there any questions for Cheryl about any of her report? All right. The franchise fee report even for the cable TV looks a little higher than normal. So I guess we're down to the mayor's report. And um, so it's not in my, the EMS um, newspaper article is not in my packet. Did you put it in their packets? It was in the one at the club. Oh, yeah, I know it was. I just, I guess I thought maybe it would be <clears throat> in everybody's packet so I didn't have to explain it. But I'm not, I'm not ready to like do that off the top of my head then. Um, it was just a way that some uh, EMTs were um, offered training. Yeah, offered training to get them to come to a to a business. So, so then I want to. Uh, we got a thank you from the beautification, and I passed it around the table for the um, share that the village contributed to the gator that the beautification got with the 75 gallon tank on the back. It's very nice. It'd be nice. It's powerful, so it's got a wand on it that also can like um, clean up under the trees uptown when we need to during the summertime when the birds that <laughs> some people hate in the <coughs> trees make a mess on the sidewalk. Um, so anyway, it's really nice. And then uh, it says CIC invitation. That's the investors dinner that Mike and I is going to be going to Wednesday night um, for the investors of the economic development. Um, there are plans for Christmas in the Village. The annual chamber <coughs> Christmas in the Village is going to, uh, it's going to be a fun event for the entire community. The event is planned for Saturday, December 8th at 5.30. Um, businesses are invited to participate. There will be a parade. Um, there can be golf carts, walking, or floats in the parade. They'll have carriage rides around the village. Um, you'll meet uptown at the Huber Opera House for cookies with Santa in the community room. New this year, a Christmas movie will be showing at the Huber for the whole family to enjoy together to get us in the Christmas spirit. So put that on your calendar for December 8th at 5.30 at the Huber. And you get to see Santa. And then um, we're telling everybody that there's a new polling place tomorrow. Everybody needs to get out and vote. You may or may not be aware of it already, but at the, Christ at the community, community Christian Center on Hicksville Edgerton Road, Hicksville Village Precincts A, B, and C, Hicksville Township, and Milford Township will all vote there this year. And I heard on the news this morning, if you can believe it, that the polls are open 6.30 to 7.30. 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. So everybody needs to get out and vote. That's a long ways to go. <laughs> it's going to be a long walk. <coughs> they should have had that in town when yeah, some people can't drive. Right. Yeah. That's a mistake. That's kind of a Well, you need to let the Board of Elections know that because they're the ones that did that, not us. It's been brought up. To okay. Them. Obviously, they aren't doing anything about it. Yeah, the comment was made for those who are watching TV that the community Christian church is a ways out for people to get if they don't drive. So mm -hmm. you need to let your board of elections know if that's a problem for you. We used to go to school. But yeah. I guess that's secure. They were definitely closer places. So then we'll go to a CRA update. You know, folks, we've been working on the CRA for, it seems like, a year. Mm -hmm. And it's just ridiculous. But I asked Cheryl to contact them, to contact the state of Ohio, um, the development of Ohio, De Ohio Development Agency or whatever, and ask them, you know, where we're at with this. And, their reply as of October 31st is the petition is still working its way up the chain of command here for approval. I just can't believe how long that's taken. 
I, mean, I talked to Jerry Hayes like two weeks ago. I was in a lunch meeting with him. I just said something to him. He was under the impression they were just waiting for the director or somebody to sign off on it. He talked to somebody and said they got whatever else we had to correct and it basically just needed the director's blessing and it'd be good to go. So that's coming up on two weeks. This has just been yeah. crazy. Crazy. So then um, we've discussed the commodities in, a, in, a, in the past. I don't know if any of you have heard from any more residents um, in the past month. If you, uh, Kat would like to know tonight so that he needs to prepare for either to end it January 1st, like we notified people was a possibility, or to keep it. And I know um, Reverend Ayers, you do a great uh, community outreach with commodities too um, at the old Assembly of God Church on Edgerton Street or Fountain Street or I don't know what your address is but I mean maybe someone would have some questions for you in this discussion but you know council members do you what do you want to do? do do you want the village to continue giving commodities away let's get some input from the Reverend do you, do you feel as though we are amply supplied or should we continue doing what the village does or well we got we have four different places that give away food right you guys are aware right mm -hmm. yes. you know, and it seems like a lot to me and if it if it can be combined or if we can work together I think it's always a better uh, process to help the people um, I've been meaning to stop down and see exactly what kind of commodities are, are going on and I think it's this Thursday is that right Kent yeah, so I'm going to try to stop down and see those commodities, but I believe uh, those same commodities are given away, or the same items are given away at a couple other different places. It seems to be overkill for me, but then again, you know, it, if it helps people, it helps people. But if we could work together, that would be something I'd really be interested in doing, and, and I've been meaning to stop with Kent and, and really dig in and see if, we, if there's some way that we can work together and continue the same amount of... Uh, of product going out and if we could work together that would be awesome. Well, didn't you say Kent that that nobody else can do this except the village? What you well, what we're set up for yeah. Yeah. It well, CPAC can be worked with. They have some different um, requirements I think but see we're with Seagate. So. Seagate excuse me. I did have one person come into my office after the last council meeting <coughs> discussion and told me that um, he would really miss it if it were gone and that's the only person I heard from. I have had people but I didn't I wasn't aware that they were given the same product away that's what they like what they get uptown. And What's it cost us? Yes and just like today Jim was gone about four and a half hours. Then we have to unload it, but that's, you know, that's One dump truck, hour. that little dump truck to, to Toledo. Yeah. Toledo and back. Wear and tear on the vehicle. That's got to be expensive running one of the little dump trucks up there. Um, I mean, I'd like to see it go, but if there's a need for it, then it has to stay if there's a need. Well, like you said, if they could all work together, that would be great, so they don't have to go to four different places. And yeah. The person that came to my office, I asked him if he would please go down on a Thursday night and check out your food giveaway to see if, because he had never been to yours, yeah. and um, to see if he could, you know, like be satisfied or happy with the items that he can choose at your place. Our items are anywhere from fruits and vegetables. Uh, it depends on what day it is, obviously. We have fruits and vegetables and uh, uh, too many sweets sometimes, but uh, and then again, we'll have some staples that we're able to give away uh, once a month, such as spaghetti, spaghetti sauce, vegetables, applesauce, those kinds of things that we order from uh, Toledo Food Bank. Now, we're able just to afford to be able to give it away once a, once a month. So they come in, they fill out their paperwork, which is very minimal, just name, address, phone number. And that's basically the paperwork is just for, in case Toledo Food Bank has like a call back, they've given away something that needs to be returned, and that's that's the only reason the paperwork is there. 
but uh, we're able to give that away every uh, every month. Uh, we serve from anywhere between 30 and 40 families almost every week. Ken, if we give it up, ever get it back? I mean, if it's I had sent him a letter, and the lady had called back. She goes, "Yeah, if you ever want to get started back up, it's pretty simple. We just have to fill out all new paperwork." But and you do it once a month. Yeah. Mostly what I've heard from the people that use it is they get things that they can't get a Christ covered or elsewhere. They've been getting eggs pretty regular. Um, we don't get eggs very often. Sometimes, not very often. We've been getting frozen meat most of the time and like frozen We're not even blueberries. Very often at all. So I think that's why they like ours because they can't get some yeah. frozen and dairy related stuff elsewhere. Somebody told me that there's a sign up at Christ Covered and they don't know how long it's, long it's been there that they're not taking any more clients. I haven't gone to check that out for myself, but I mean, if I don't know why that would be either, but. Re refresh my memory, how many people are we serving now? Approximately. I think last month we had like 35 families, but <laughs> 47 people for somewhere in that neighborhood. We've had a lot of older people that are no longer with us in the past couple of years. That's why our numbers are kind of dwindling. I mean, we picked up a few and some younger people. Uh, and can I tell, ask what the requirements from Seagate, what, what they ask of you? People fill out a form. It's like an honor system on your income level. Not ask for income level, yeah. But you, you don't have to check that box. I would. I am pretty confident the people we get would meet their income levels. I mean, I'm usually there when they're giving them out. Uh, that's really all it is. We don't call up to ask for. I want this, this, this. No. no. We just go up whatever they got on hand that day. They they send back so it's and we get the canned fruit canned vegetables <coughs> the pastas uh, this time around they sent quarts of milk that people are probably going to have to drink on the day we hand them <laughs> but yeah, they sent yeah, quarts yeah, of milk yeah, yeah. that's the first we've ever gotten those uh, well whatever but we got eggs again and shredded cheese and uh, frozen blueberries you have a freezer right that you put them in we've got Two freezers and a fridge freezer. Sometimes that's not hard enough. And do you have to throw anything away? The frozen and, well, if dairy stuff's way expired by the time it's done, yeah, we'll get rid of that. We usually don't have a whole lot of waste. Okay. And you want, a, you want a decision tonight? It would kind of be nice to know because if you were thinking of getting rid of it first of the year, I'd given everybody a notice, you know, last month. I'd give them another one this Thursday, and then they would know December is it. I mean, if you want to keep it, I don't care. I, I think I we should keep like it because of the meats, and uh, that's my opinion. Well, what about the other places that distribute food? I mean, uh, what? Senior centers just for 60 and over. They get from Seagate also. Yeah, I wasn't sure where they got there. Yeah, they got they have a little box um, on a lot of the dry goods and those kinds of things. But that's that for the senior center only. And you don't feel it's abused at all? Not the people I've seen come in. Okay. I think we should keep doing it. But there's no way of combining forces with the church and then having them distribute it. I mean, I still I don't think we should give it up either, but if it's a question of you know, the day we're giving it out, if they can give it out for us and fill out the paperwork. Well, the paperwork doesn't take me all that long. It's, it's just somebody to going after it. We can go and get it and unload it there. Yeah. And they got to get it bagged. I mean, I, I I don't know how you guys do it. But Tisha does it down here, doesn't she? Yeah, she'll, she'll spend a couple hours tomorrow getting stuff bagged up, ready for it. Yeah. I know the people that I see uptown up by the EUB church, I see at your office. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of overlap, that's for sure. But you know, if there's different things, there's different things. Yeah. Yeah. But if there's any way that we could, uh, it seems to me we'd be taking a load off the city if we were able to combine and and uh, um, 
bring it to our place on Thursdays, and I'm just making a suggestion, bring it to our place on Thursdays and we give it away. And to me, that gives a, a load off Kent a little bit in the space and the time that it takes away, whether it's possible or not. And by no means, there's no competition here. Right? You know, no. no. By no means, there's no way there. How about we, uh, and we will vote on this, so I guess I could make this a motion. We keep what we have in place, and in the interim, Kent and the Reverend can get together and see what they can put together and see if, if Seagate will allow the products that Kent gets to go to the Reverend. Well, I used to have it set up with the senior center. Get all that stuff. We would come into town. They delay it. They would have all this. I'm just making this number up. I mean, it varied every month. I'll just say they had 30. We would we would unload stuff there with my paperwork. They would hand it out. They home delivered some of it. We don't. And then they would have some people pick it up there. They would fill out our forms, and they'd have to run their forms up to me to add into mine. That's uh, something Seagate never really knew that's what we were doing. I just counted it all in mine. And this thing right yeah. But then we were unloading half of it there and then half or three fourths of our shop and half of it there. Which added more time and people tied up. Reverend, do they deliver to you? Toledo Food Bank does. We're a part of the drop program. Uh, they found out that uh, they pick up all the things such as, for example, in Defiance at the Walmarts and the Kroger's and they bring it all the way to Defiance and they bring it all the way back down to us. And they thought, well, maybe it might be smarter just to have them drop it over. So as long as we order, I don't know, a couple hundred pounds, a hundred dollars worth a month, we're a part of the drop program. So every week they drop off who knows what we're going to get. Yeah. We don't have no idea what it is. Well, it would be nice if they could deliver... But we yeah, we would we would have real problems running all the way to Toledo. Yes, to yes. We wouldn't be able to do that. Right. Well, and and that that is part of my statement of you two can work that out in the interim, and and uh, possibly the village can get their hands away from it, but we still won't lose the service to the community. Uh, but I make that motion that we retain it and that these guys work it together. I'll second that motion. Roll call, please. Baker? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Jones? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Barth? Yes. Ridgeway? Yes. 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 You can't yet. <laughs> I don't know if you can, we have a new sign out at the police department. I don't know if any of you have seen yeah, it or not. Nice. Looks real nice. Wait, that was um, Kent has um, got a new plaque on the this rock for use Argon. Park, right? And you know we have our big celebration coming up in town Sunday. Actually Saturday at the library there's um a gentleman that's bringing in his World War One memorabilia and collection. And he's going to be in the uniform and everything. Okay. He will also be attending uh, the commemoration for the um, World War One centennial that's going to be held at the Veterans Memorial Sunday at one o'clock, and uh, it's going to be a real nice event. We have a special speaker coming from Maryland. Um, so hopefully you'll come. The Cornerstone Church there by the Veterans Memorial is going to serve lunch from 11.30 to 1. People can park in the parking lot there and other parking will be available at the Mennonite Church on the corner of uh, Arthur Street and Spencerville somewhat. Um, so uh, there's also going to be a couple golf carts around to help transport people if they feel like they're parking a little far away and can't walk that far. And then I have concerns about the weather. I think it's supposed to be maybe in the 30s by Sunday. And I think that might be a little too cold to be outside for the service. So Cornerstone Church has said that if we do have 
um, poor weather that we could use their sanctuary for the commemoration. Well, unfortunately, you won't see all the beautiful wreaths and everything there, but I guess if, if you're up to it, you can go to the memorial. There's going to be a new piece of granite installed with new wording on it. Um, they'll have the wreaths laid there um, and then come over to the church or whatever. But this is just going to be a last-minute call as to whether it's, you know, maybe we'll suddenly get a great day and it won't be a big deal but if it is um, you know cold don't let that stop you because we'll probably move it inside is there anything else I haven't said about that the only thing <clears throat> thing that worries me more than anything is people uh, it'd be nice because I think we're gonna have some out-of-town folks coming so it would be nice especially in that area if people try to not mow their grass out in the road. I mean, we're going to do as much cleaning as we can on Friday. We know I do so much. Uh, pick up their, you know, just try to make town look a little nicer. I mean, we have a lot of people coming into town. I know some people don't care what other people think, but and people can kind of take some extra care. I think it would be nice. Well, be recognizing the 100th anniversary of the Edward C. Smart American Legion in town. So they'll be recognized. So I think we'll have a really nice event. So try to stop by the library on Saturday and down at the Veterans Memorial at one o'clock um, on Sunday. But go eat at the Cornerstone Church if you want to. That's open to the public too. And I think that takes care of that note. And I'd like to thank Tribune Printing for donating the printing of invitations and envelopes and stuff that we sent out for that uh, commemoration, and we sent them far and wide. So it'll be interesting to see who comes. We've invited relatives of the families of the World War I veterans. So <clears throat> when's a Christmas cruise through start? 16th. All right. So it's 17th Saturday. Yes, we have a week yet, but that's, they've been working awful hard on that, and that is going to be Begging one big light show this year, so keep that in mind. Begging for volunteers. Mm -hmm. You can call, oh. I think, um, and or they have an application <coughs> form online that you can fill out. Yeah, it is really program. easy to sign up online to work. I did that last year, and they really do need a lot of volunteers, some inside and some outside. Um, so you don't have to be out in the cold. But Denise up here um, at Alliance Tax Service, you could always walk in there too and probably volunteer if you don't want to go online. So, and I know uh, we have some, <clears throat> do we have some athletes at the school that have had some good accomplishments recently? Like cross yeah, country? Like cross country, uh, Michaela Sullivan and Tiffany uh, Chiapetta. They were supposed to run last weekend at state. They both qualified for state, but due to all this, the rain we had over the weekend, Columbus got it all, or Hebron got it all also, and so it was postponed due to flooding, so they'll run this upcoming Saturday at the state. We, uh, do it. we wish them good luck. It would be uh, Micah Schrader uh, for golf, or the girls golf. They had the Northwest Zone District uh, meeting for the girls division. Uh, two girls and she was nominated and selected as a division a second team all conference or all districts for the Northwest Zone. Yeah. It's kind of hard to get first team when they're competing with uh, Shelby and LCC's in our division and they were first and second in state. Yeah. Wow. And, yeah, only top Pretty six good. get first team so yeah, she, she got second team which is a good accomplishment. So. Well, we congratulate them and uh, wish the runners good luck. Anything else? <laughs> Motion adjourned. <laughs> Second that. Roll call, please. Bridgeway. Yes. Jones. Yes. Baker. Yes. Bassett. Yes. Beverly. Yes. Murph. Yes. Thank you. Oh, absolutely.